Hi everyone, I'm Clayton with My Pets Brace and we're working with Prada here. Um, we're doing a hock brace fitting or an Achilles tendon brace fitting. Um, she recently had surgery and her vet wanted uh, extra support with the brace to help her recover because she's an active, playful dog and so she she's, uh, really needs some time to enjoy herself while she's recovering from surgery. And she's been in a splint for a few weeks and so this is her first time in the brace and we're doing our fitting. So we have her brace here, I'm ready to put it on, but at least every time you want to you put the brace on or once a day at minimum, we want to take some baby powder or cornstarch and very generously powder the brace. This is going to be our first defense against excessive friction that could cause irritation. That would not be good. Um, so I'm going to really generally pow generously powder it and just kind of rub it in, massage it into the foam so it stays nice and soft. I'm going to get powder all over everything. so. Do it over a sink or a trash can if you want to be kind to um, your pants or your floors. So we've got this nicely powdered. You can see it's fairly uniformly white in the brace, which is nice. So I'm going to just gently pick up Prada's leg and bring her ankle where my, where my thumb and hand is, bring the ankle to the, to the brace itself. And then we want to put her foot on the bottom of the brace. So the foot plate, the paw is going to fit in the bottom of the brace, the foot plate. We want it to kind of be fairly close to the end of the foot if we can help it. She'll probably be in a different position once she stands up. But the idea is I want to kind of hold her in a good position with a thumb. It's fairly easy to do this with two hands, but it takes a little bit of practice. I'm going to undo my first strap, work my way from the bottom up. I'm going to go and open the loop of the buckle, go through the buckle, and cinch up the strap. I want to try and center the pad as best I can, and then tighten the strap gently. Then I'm going to do my next strap, working the way up. On Prada's brace, we have the lower straps connected with one big pad, same with the upper straps. So depending on the brace, or depending on the size of the brace, the pads may be slightly different, but the idea is that we want the pads centered um, along the, the skin that's exposed in the brace. And we're going to slowly work our way up. Go through the buckles, and back around. And then we're going to do our final strap. being very good and relaxed. It looks like she's in pretty good, a pretty good spot. She may come down in the brace a little bit more once she kind of bears weight on the brace. It's hard, it's hard to get a picture of what she's going to look like in the brace until she stands up. But I can check she's got you know, fairly good range of motion at the knee. Um, you know, she just looks like she's going to be in a good position when she gets up and walks in her brace. Before she stands up, I want to check a couple things. Again, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't too tall on the back of the leg. But I'm going to take a tongue depressor, find one, look at it, and I want to just kind of gently check along the sides, you know, of the foot, make sure there's not any super tight spots. I'll probably would do this again once we um, take the straps off slowly. I would check along the sides. I want I want the tongue depressor to move smoothly on either side of the brace. If there's any spots that get stuck or are tighter than the others, you might want to make a mark of it with a marker or a pencil. And that may be something that we need to adjust here back at my pet's brace. So you always want to make sure that you, we watch the dog walk if you have a nice hallway. Um, you know, watch the dog walk away from you and watch the dog walk towards you. What I'm looking for, I want to make sure that she's, you know, walking fairly square and straight, you know, she's not wobbling or wiggling. Um, she's re probably really doing pretty fantastic. It's not uncommon when a dog first gets a hock brace on that they walk on their toes because they're not used to the change in angle that the brace gives them. But I think Prada's had enough time in a splint, she's kind of learned that it basically feels the same at this point. Um, if she was, you know, what we would call posting the wrong direction too far to the inside or outside when she puts her foot down that would tell me we need to make some adjustments to the um, soling of the brace the bottom of the brace but she's really coming down where I would want it to come down 
starting kind of on the inside at the back of the foot and rolling forward um, fairly smoothly. It doesn't, doesn't seem to be hanging her up any, any um, negative way. And I think she'll only get better with time. She's really being very, very good. We just came back from our first walk in the break so I can kind of identify some adjustments that need to be made. And I noticed a few things when I was watching her walk as well as when I was doing my initial fitting. Um, one thing that you want to check when you're fitting the brace is we want to make sure that she can comfortably bend the knee. It's a little bit too tall, so as she bends the knee we're getting a lot of pressure or potential pinching behind the knee. So I'm going to need to trim that back. So if you're fitting a brace that we've sent you, um, we want to make sure that that's not too tall there and we can always trim it back if we have the brace back to adjust it. So I'm going to make that slight adjustment here while we're having Prada with us. And then um, if we look at the way her foot is fitting in here right now, it's not exactly accurate of how she was walking in the brace, but I can actually see because I powdered the brace prior to her walking where the foot was ending up when she was walking. So I'm going to actually need to trim this foot plate back. Again, that's another thing that if we send you a brace, you would have to send us the brace back to adjust it, but I'm going to trim that back to be a proper length for her foot. I'd always rather have the foot plate be long to trim away than have it be too short and have her toes off the end. Um, additionally, you can see how her foot is farther back in the brace than where my finger was showing where she was walking. So that tells me that I need to make these bottom straps slightly tighter. So I'm going to need to trim back this area here on both sides to push these pads slightly tighter on her body to hold her in the brace more. If when we when we saw her walking, her foot was moving back and forth in the shoe or in the bottom of the of the foot plate, that'd be the same if I was wearing a shoe that was too big, my foot would slide back and forth. I don't want that sliding because sliding can create extra friction that could give her a sore. So, so what what we do in the office here, we um, have this oil pen, paint pen, um, and we take take this pen and mark along the line of the buckles where the, where the buckle and the strap meet at the correct tension, we put these marks so that when you're putting the brace on yourself, um, you know exactly where to put the strap as tight as it needs to be to hold in the brace properly. This also helps you over time if you say, oh, we're having a problem that's you know, not tight enough or it's too tight or we're having a, a sore issue, you can know where, based on where you started, you can say, oh, let's try making the strap slightly looser than the mark, slightly tighter than the mark, and you can learn from you know, where we start initially, where to go in the future. You know, this is a process, this takes time to learn. Um, as far as the dog needs some time to get used to the brace, sometimes the skin gets a little bit um, sensitive and we need to make adjustments to the tension of the straps or the size of the straps, which may mean we need to make the straps tighter or looser over time. These top straps for Prada's brace, and generally all, all top straps on Hawk braces are reinforced with what we call Daycron. It makes the strap stronger. There's a lot of pressure on her shin because um, she's trying to push herself out of the brace on the top. So these straps make it strong enough to really hold on and make sure that you're not calling us every week for new straps. Um, we have measurements of all the straps that we create on each brace, so you won't have to measure for us. Um, we can just send you the correct strap. And generally they all are removed with um, either a regular flathead screwdriver or a wrench that if um, we, you needed the wrench we would send you along with the strap. We'd start from the top to take it off. Slowly undoing each strap. Folding it back on itself so we don't get it tangled up in any hair. Prada's very short hair so we don't have to worry about it, but if it's a lab or a longer haired dog like a shepherd or even a Newfoundland that'd be quite a problem. Good girl, Prada, almost. We did our top two. Um, Prada just got out of her splint, so she does have some sores that were from long-term use of the splint, so we want to make sure that the padding that we have on the brace is nice and comfortable for her. We're going to do our bottom straps next. And just carefully lift her out of the brace. Once again, it's Clayton from My Pets Brace. We're still working with Prada doing our hock fitting. I just wanted to go over a couple important features or things that you want to take note of if you're fitting a hock brace. So this is an example of what we call a jointed hock brace. It has these urethane joints that are at the ankle joint. So the idea for Prada is she had surgery 
And so gradually we're going to be able to allow her motion at the ankle. So this is almost acting as a splint that she had on previously right now. But if I turn the brace around, we have these cross straps at the back that we call range, that we call range of motion straps. They're secured with um, these screws. And I took measurements of these, of what we call the zero motion is. And so over time, um, Prada's owner will call us and say, hey, my doctor has let, given me clearance to have range of motion, send me longer straps. So um, that may be something that we do for you as well. And again, this is an example of a, of a jointed brace. You may have a non-jointed brace, which wouldn't have these cross straps, wouldn't have these joints, or the brace itself would be just one solid piece of plastic. Um, depending on the case, there would be a reason for or against the joints and um, ask your vet if you have any questions about why we went with a certain uh, position or call us if the vet isn't quite sure either. Um, again, the idea that this is going to be a progressive brace, meaning that as she gets stronger and as she gets, uh, as her surgery recovers, she's going to have more motion, which gives her even more of a natural gait as she gets stronger and stronger. Um, for some dogs that you know, have a more progressive injury that isn't going to be any better, the idea would be they wouldn't put a joint in because we need to give them as much support and stability as they need for as long as possible.